Hey, welcome to On This Day. Today's date is January 27th, and it is Bubble Wrap Appreciation Day. I'm not kidding. If you have never felt the true joy of running on a 10-yard patch of bubble wrap, I'm here to tell you, you haven't lived. There are 339 days left in 2020. This is the 37th day of winter. There are 53 days left until spring. As I researched this video, I learned that most things that happened on this day were military in nature. So put a helmet on. We're going to war on on January 27th. 1776, the American Revolutionary War. Henry Knox's noble train of artillery arrives in Cambridge, Massachusetts. In a nutshell, the British had control of Boston and had for some time. But around nine months earlier, before Knox got there, in April, the Continental Army showed up and surrounded the city and laid siege. During this time, it was pretty much a stalemate. The British were very well dug in, and the Americans really didn't have the firepower to force them to unass the AO. Unass the AO is infantry jargon for they didn't have big enough cannons to make the British go away. That was until Knox showed up with these big ass cannons we stole from the British at Fort Ticonderoga. Now I'm not sure how many cannonballs they shot into the city of Boston to make the Redcoats decide that the neighborhood had gone to crap, but by March 17th they boarded their ships and put Boston in the rearview mirror. 1825, the U.S. Congress approves Indian Territory, basically present day Oklahoma, starting the process of the forced relocation of Eastern Indians on the Trail of Tears. This was truly a sad time for our country's history. Even more so for the Native Americans, obviously. 1916, World War I, the British government passes legislation that introduced conscriptions in the United Kingdom. 1939, the first flight of the Lockheed P-38 Lightning. This was an amazing thing. This airplane was both unique and a game changer in World War II. It really helped turn the tide against the Japanese in the Pacific. Oddly enough, a famous civilian made this plane even more lethal. The P-38 had two engines and was almost twice as fast as just about any other fighter aircraft at the time, but it had relatively short range. Charles Lindbergh, the famous aviator, came up with a fuel strategy that included adjusting the fuel mixture and the engine RPM to double the range. They went from six hours of flight time to about 14 hours of flight time, which is amazing. 1944, World War II, the 900-day siege of Leningrad is lifted. This was a military blockade undertaken from the south by the army of Nazi Germany against Soviet Soviet city of Leningrad. It's now St. Petersburg. It's on the eastern front of World War II. The Finnish army was in on it with Germany and invaded from the north, at least for a while. Finland had recaptured territory they lost in the Winter War that they had with the Soviet Union a couple years earlier, but refused to go any further and approach the city, which, you know, didn't really please the Germans. They were hoping for a lot more help, but they, Finland was only in on it to get their old land back. 1945, World War II, the Soviet 322nd Rifle Division liberates the remaining inmates of Auschwitz. January 27th is also International Holocaust Remembrance Day. 1967, the Apollo program. Astronauts Gus Grissom, Ed White, and Roger Chaffee are killed in a fire during a test of their Apollo 1 spacecraft at the Kennedy Space Center in Florida. This is why they always say NASA hates fire. 1973, the Paris Peace Accord officially ends the Vietnam War. Colonel William Nold is killed in action, becoming the conflict's last recorded American combat casualty. And I do apologize if I mispronounce its name. It's William N-O-L-D-E. Nold, I believe it is. Born on January 27th, 1756, Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart, Austrian pianist and composer. That sounds like I say penis. I've tried like six times, but each time I sound like I'm calling the guy a dick. Anyway, I've read a few things about Mozart. Besides being incredibly talented, he was also incredibly weird. He was a habitual rubber of people the wrong way. You know, he just always irritated people, apparently. 1832, Lewis Carroll, English novelist, poet, and mathematician. Now, I find this one weird because most of the time people start writing poems and novels because they suck at math, but he was an English English writer and world famous for children's fiction, notably Alice's Adventures in Wonderland, which became Alice in Wonderland, and the sequel Through the Looking Glass. He later on got into photography, which a lot of people, yeah, they weren't too big on. He was doing a lot of nude photography, and they were 
Kids by today's standards, you know, legally considered underage. At the time, I don't think they were, but these days they think he was a bit of a perv. 1901, Art Rooney, American football player and coach, founder of the Pittsburgh Steelers. The interesting thing about the Steelers, since 1960s, they've had three head coaches and they have a history of winning. Their division rival, my favorite team, the Cleveland Browns, has had 17 head coaches since the 1960s and they have a history of sucking like a black hole. 1942, John Witherspoon, American actor, he just died last year. Famous for his role as Ice Cube's dad on the Fridays movies. Now, the thing about John Witherspoon, if you know anything about comedy, the man's timing was amazing. That's what made him so funny. Not what he said, just when he said it and how he said it. Great, great actor. 1957, Frank Miller, American illustrator, director, producer, and screenwriter. One of the most talented and legendary comic book illustrators on the planet. 1964, Bridget Fonda, American actress. Henry Fonda's granddaughter, Peter Fonda's daughter. She was a very good actress for a lot of years. Then she just sort of quit. She was in a lot of movies, but Jackie Brown and one of my favorites was The Point of No Return. Like I said, a whole bunch of others. She was offered the role as Allie McBeal back in the late 80s, I guess, but she turned it down, wanted to focus on her movie career. She was in a car accident in 2001, and that same year, a couple months later actually, she married Danny Elfman, the frontman for Oingo Boingo, and he does all kinds of composing for movies nowadays, including the Rugrats, the cartoon. He does all the music for... Anyway, moving on. She pretty much dropped out of sight. I guess guess to raise her and Danny Elfman's son. I don't know. She was a good actress. 1969, Patton Oswalt, American comedian and actor. He's also married to one of my personal favorite actresses, Meredith Salinger, who was actually in one of Bridget Fonda's movies, one of her last movies, Lake Placid. Died on January 27th, 2004, Jack Parr, American talk show host and author. He was the host of what would become The Tonight Show. He sat in the chair from 1957 to 1962. He was preceded by Johnny Carson. 2010, J.D. Salinger, American soldier and author. Among other books, he wrote Catcher in the Rye. He died at the ripe old age of 91.